I'm back. So what have we got today? Well, today we're looking at uh, part two, in effect, of the uh, the Helix rack and uh, how I've got it set up and how I'm using it. We covered in part one uh, a lot of the aspects about the cabling at the back, but in reality, I've changed that a little bit. Uh, not by that much, but uh, down there in the uh, in the text, you should see a new diagram of how it's set up now. And there were a few things, a uh, few problems that I had along the way. Yeah, as you might well too. And uh, yeah, they get in the way a little bit. Can be a little bit difficult to solve. However, in this case. I did solve them, and uh, part of it was this uh, this Line 6 Relay G90. Yeah, but let me explain what that was. Now you can see that I use this uh, Samsung Powerbright PB10. It's a bit old, in fact it's almost as old as me. <laughs> yeah, uh, but don't let that put you off, because it's got eight connections at the back, that uh, so you can feed all these other things in the rack, uh, you know. Most people have seen them, or something like, maybe like a Furman. Yeah, they're common too. But what I had was, uh, I had this fed from the uh, Power Bright, and this fed from the Power Bright, and this fed from the Power Bright. Plus a couple of other bits and pieces in the back, uh, which you'll get to see presently, you know, with mains connectors and that sort of thing. And it was all very nice uh, until I tried to do anything. <laughs> Now I've backed out just a little bit, not to show me you my fat stomach, because it is fat, but don't worry, when you get as old as me, yours will be fat too, if it isn't already. Don't worry. I'm here to show you that. Now that's the, uh, the Marshall 410 HJS, the JVM 410 HJS, the Satriani head. But let's come back to the beautiful face. No, that one, not this one. Fact is that I wasn't going to use any uh, amplifier simulations. I never had any in mind when I bought the Helix. I didn't even want them. I'm surrounded in this room. You don't see them right now, but trust me. Ah, it's 20 plus amps, tube amps, and every device you can think of. I've even got a transistor on it. So I, I didn't need any of that. What I really needed, what I wanted, was to use the Helix for effects. It's a master of effects, and for the money that I paid, check my other video, which is also down there in the text, video one. Uh, this was unbeatable. and um, It was about half the price of a Kemper. I've got a Kemper over there. And it was about... Uh, well, about a third of the price of a uh, Axe FX3. So I didn't bother with that either. I bought this. And I set it up in such a way so that it's using this thing called a four cable method. Yeah. So the four cable method works great for me with that amp down there. And uh, yeah, the diagram's down in there, like I said. And, and this has been set up very specifically uh, for this four cable method. So there is no amplifier in there, there's no simulator. I think on this one, uh, I'll just move across a little bit, yeah, there's a, there's a preamp that I could kick in, and uh, more of that later uh, on another preset. I could do that, but I don't need it with an amp like this, I don't need it. And down on the floor down there, uh, is the controller for the Helix, which is now set up. It's got everything uh, all rocking and rolling. And the amp's been set up uh, to be controlled by MIDI, which is, a, I'm going to do a separate video on that to show you exactly how to set the Helix up with a Marshall MIDI amp. Oh, it sounds easy, doesn't it? No, it isn't. It doesn't work quite right. And I think it's partially the problem of Marshall, but don't worry doesn't really matter which guys have got a bit of a problem with it, but uh, yeah, it's fiddly. Now I do have two presets. This one's 
called four cable dash light dash use and it doesn't mean light use it means light pipe AI which is a track I wrote uh, some while ago and it was set up for that particular style of tone so that's one of the settings and I've got another setting here I've got the Cali rectifier which I, I do have uh, a simulator on not used I've got a side rectifier which is uh, Jason Sudites, I think his name, that's his, and I don't use that either. I've got another Cali rectifier, which is the original. And 2A is a four cable light pipe. Well, it's not quite four cable light pipe, as you know it, because that one's designed to go straight through into the control room and into the desk. Uh, and that does have uh, still the German Ubersonic but it's also got a speaker simulator and all the rest of it. Whereas this other one's slightly different. Now the thing is, since we were last in here, few things have changed for the better. But I'm going to explain what I did and, well, basically. Now I don't have any of my fancy pointers out here, but I have got a pen, so that'll do. Now, most of this stuff is sort of similar to where we were at, but uh, different enough to matter. You can see that I've got the Mimic pedal sitting up the side here, as it was on the original drawing. And what I've done over this side, right there, you can probably just about see it, is I actually have a, uh, that one's a Roland power supply that goes across underneath, comes up the side and powers that Mimic all the time. Now, what we've got, uh, when we're using this four cable method, we've got a quarter out here that goes to the input of the uh, loop. And then we've got another quarter that comes back and feeds off around. And then this one over here, without boring you too much, goes around to the front of the amp. I had a problem. When you use this, you know, the wireless, I had a massive hum on the unit. And it turned out to be something very different than what I thought it was. Well, what did I do? Well, the first thing I did was to think about uh, getting something like a home eliminator and putting it inside this, this, this wire here uh, to get rid of the home. Yeah, I bought a real cheap and nasty one, as it happens. Well, I say cheap and nasty. It's <laughs> pretty much like all the others. It's got two ins and two outs. This is a Behringer one, uh, Micro HD, HD 400, and uh, yeah, I bought that, plugged it in, didn't make a bean of difference. <laughs> so when you're taking your wire and you're buying your Behringer HD 400, don't waste your money. I know they're only sort of $20 or something, but total waste of time. What the real problem was, we've got to come back to that relay, which is this unit here, it's right there. And what I've got, I've got the power coming out of the top, out of the power bright, and going into the relay down here. And what it turned out to be uh, was a ground loop. Well, how do I know that? Well, it's simple. I disconnected the ground. Oh, my God. Everybody's going to say, you disconnected the ground. It'll kill you, man. Well, not quite. Let me explain why. Well, the first thing I did... If you take a look at this rack, you can't see it now, but there'll be a picture coming up on the screen. It shows you the real AG90 that I isolated out of the rack uh, on the two frontiers. And I did that with, uh, actually I did it with masking tape. Uh, or should I say the, the tougher stuff. Yeah, so there was no connectivity between the rack itself and the G90. It didn't make a bean of difference, although I have historically seen that problem so when it didn't make a difference I thought to myself you know I'm gonna have to look a bit closer at this this grounding in this uh, this feed for this unit remember the amplifier down there and all these in here are coming off the same outlets in the studio you gotta bear that in mind so what did I do well I took this off like this and I took the end off and I cut the ground wire yeah, I'm like that. And of course, you know, a lot of guys will say to me, Tony, you're going to get killed. Well, that might have been the case, except for one thing, really. Uh, 
Yeah, and the one thing is, first of all, everything else in there is grounded. And second of all, well, the only connection to me is through wireless. <laughs> so, the chances of me getting killed, so to speak, actually zero. Yeah, there's no chance. The singular item that's isolated is that G90. And you know what? It solved the hum immediately. Absolutely immediately. In fact, if you listen really carefully, I can just about hear it on. Or not. It's really quiet. But that's quite livable. And, uh, you, you know, I'll get around that in other ways. Now, I don't want to throw away the Behringer HD 400 that we were talking about. And there's very good reason why. Because on that loop, uh, when we're using it with this amp and the four cable method, it does create a very slight hum. Yeah, and when you put this in circuit, just trust me on this, it takes away the very slight hum. So it does have a use. It doesn't have the use of fixing a ground loop like that one was. That was incredibly bad. Uh, but it does have a use and it'll be probably getting sat in there somewhere out of the way. It'll be on the diagram at least. And I'll show you how I connected it into the rack. So that's a little brief uh, overview of some of the things I've been doing while this hasn't been uh, on YouTube. <laughs> I haven't really done that much because I don't need to do that much. Uh, I have my important sound and I have my secondary method of getting the uh, signal across to the recording desk. So I can play two ways. I can either mic the thing up or I can go straight to the desk with some other type of uh, preamp. I don't really need the amp. <laughs> the preamp works fine. There's a lot of things in uh, Studio One uh, that allows me not even to have preamp. Well, actually, there's a lot of things full stop in that. So what I want to show you now is uh, a couple of views of these two uh, presets that I have. And... Uh, couple of the things of how I did it but it, it's not going to be too extensive I don't really want to spend all day on that uh, it gets a bit boring okay well what we're going to do is take a quick look through uh, HX edit and uh, the couple of settings that I have set up it's nothing special about them except that I'm tending to use the amp rather than tending to use some sort of simulator you know she's never really that great uh, Real amps rock. It's as simple as that. And especially when they got tubes in them, rather than simulating some tubes that I've already got. There's no point. Okay, so let's go and have a look a bit closer. Okay, well this is a, a sort of a pretty quick rundown. Uh, well, first of all, uh, the O1A I've got, which is called four cable light use, which is what you saw earlier in the video. There's nothing hyper special about this, uh, but if we run across from the top, you can see on the screen is the inputs. Completely as left as it was basically. Moving along I've got, uh, I've got the wire pedal, uh, which is the pedal that I'd made in a different video, and uh, you probably saw in that uh, quick shot of the pedal board. Works perfect. Along from that we've got uh, a distortion uh, that isn't always on at the moment it is on you can see but that's a minor tool which is really uh, yeah a con move along a bit further I've got an FX loop and the FX loops all about this four cable method and you've got to have some way of getting things in and out and there's my way of getting things in and out by whacking in an FX loop. You can have a look at where it goes and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with it, but you can. We've got the, uh, next up we've got this German Ubersonic or Ubersonic, uh, which is turned off and probably will stay that way in this particular setup. Following on from that, we've got uh, 
a 1B12 Cali, well, it's a speaker of a Californian uh, amp, which is actually uh, a Mark IV Mesa, if I remember right. There's a speaker, 1B12, it's turned off, and it's turned off because I have a speaker card. Yeah. We'll move on a bit further. I've got a volume control on the uh, left hand side of my floor system to uh, control the overall volume. Works perfect. I then whip off into a loop uh, over here and you can see I've got a delay. There's nothing special about any of this. It's all pretty run-of-the-mill stuff. And a reverb because I like to get a reasonable tone. I've got some dynamics a bit further across, which is a noise gate, uh, which just cuts back a little bit uh, <clears throat> when I want it to. But I have a, a noise gate on the amp anyway, so it's just there just in case. I'm going to whip down into this second uh, feed, if you will. I've got another FX loop here, and that FX loop is really for the Mimic, and uh, that's an FX loop on the back of the helix. So all pretty obvious what it is. Send and return. Da, 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 da. Then got an EQ. Uh, this is a low and high shelf EQ. That's where it sits for me. It might be good for you, it might not be. Who cares? It's my amp, isn't it? <laughs> and then I've got the uh, the level out, which is uh, yeah, as you can see it's sitting at 0 dB. 0, 0.0 dB gain. Yeah, yeah, what more can I say? I won't bore you with it. But that's the first one. That's the uh, the one where I play and it's going through the amp and it's coming out the speaker and it sounds awesome as you're going to get to, you're definitely going to get to hear that. Now also in this preset I've got a, a, a pile of things that they call snapshots and what that's really all about it's about taking what we've got on that screen there and being able to turn various things on and off with each preset, with each snapshot, as they call it, rather than preset. And I certainly did do that, and uh, let's go and have another look at the screen. I'll show you what I mean. OK, so what you're looking at here is OD1 Orange. But if I move up the top here, which is where, this is where all the uh, snapshots are, You'll see that various things are turned on and off as we move down through these. That turned on, if you notice. Now it's off. And we can sort of whiz down among these. There's, some of them don't really show you that much difference. But there are differences. There are some differences. You see on this one, that delay magically appeared. And on some of the others, it doesn't. It turned off. So these uh, snapshots, extremely powerful. It, in effect, gives you uh, eight completely different settings of your preset uh, easily, and they're all set upable on the uh, four pedal. And uh, that's exactly the way I did it. And I uh, I used MIDI to control the amp and uh, do all that stuff, which I'll show you in a separate video. Okay, so good so far. What do you reckon? Uh, well, the thing is, as well as being able to play in there and record it with a mic and all the rest of it, if that's what you want. I mean, I have this set up for what I want, not for what you want. So everybody's different, aren't they? For me, it's perfect. But I set up this other uh, setting, and that's really to bring two wires out of the helix into a, a second uh, desk in effect in there and then across into this one over the AVB network yeah I thought it was a good idea and it, it is a good idea especially when this wall behind me vanishes and we extend the studio quite dramatically uh, which is on its way but not yet anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here and show you the second uh, preset, we'll call it that, the one for recording to the desk. And it's not really that different, it's just different things turned on and off. That's life, isn't it? <laughs> okay, well here I am still on 
a standard preset but I can whip down here you can see I've got this Cowie rectifier which is basically a modified one of the original then I've got Jason Sedaiti's rectifier which is his preset I bought that as it happens I think I think I did just to see what he did and you can have a look at what he did he's a bit sparse really but he's got a lot of things going on and the uh, the Cali rectifier I have here I sort of tweaked around a bit as well and we've got another Cali rectifier sitting out of the way and then we come to this 2A this 4 cable light pipe here it is it looks very similar very similar to the other one but the preamp uh, I do have turn well I do turn on it's not on at the moment but this preset does have it turned on and it has the speaker turned on as well yeah so I do a little bit of messing around with that but nothing that dynamic really to tell you the truth so you can see it's not really that different than the previous preset that I showed you uh, that's looking after sort of coming out the real speaker and the real amp it's just that this time it's not coming through the real speaker and the real amp it's coming into this desk down here below me and uh, away you go yeah so I don't want to use uh, this too much but I do have a use for it for some of the recording and once again in here I haven't bothered to name these these snapshots but they're all they're all there they're all slightly different in one place or another now you can believe it or not <laughs> I actually have another preset which is says uh, this one's called four cable same again four cable recording so I can sort of hop between any one of the sort of three or four or five or six different uh, presets that I've got and the four cable recording I can show it you but it's not really that much different than any of the others so I think it's a bit pointless doing that uh, yeah well so where do I go from here well I could go a thousand places I could go home <laughs> but I'm not going to uh, one of the things I do want to point out on the uh, HX edit for anybody that's out there that's got a sort of pretty powerful PC like it is in the studio this was set up for uh, like a 4k screen very high resolution so I could get more on the screen you know makes sense doesn't it especially with all the different stuff that you might want to have open and uh, yeah HX edit wasn't happy with all of those uh, so some of the some of the settings uh, can be a bit of a problem so I sort of had to bring down the resolution and reduce the size of the uh, you know the uh, the fonts and the rest so just bear that in mind won't you it can be a bit of a problem okay well that was a sort of quick run through of what I've covered up to now with the helix the, the faffing around setting that amp up was well days uh, it seems that the JVM 410 HJS is not so easy to set up well it is but you've got to go through a very funny sequence with the helix and when I had the original JVM some years ago at least five or six years oh, must must be five years ago or longer I had similar problems with the uh, the ground control trying to control the amp so I'm reasonably convinced that uh, the JVM uh, amp has its uh, quirks in MIDI and I do know that they did release a later hex version of the chip that's inside that amp uh, to sort out some of the MIDI problems with uh, a MIDI Raider if I remember right I've been asleep since that years and years ago so so that will be coming up in a separate video uh, yeah it's it's worth putting on video because there is no video anywhere showing you how to do that and I have the suspicion that a lot of other amps are very similar they're either going to work perfectly correct straight away or they're not and there's a sequence in the helix also like I said uh, that if you don't go through the sequence how you might think you would just press a button well then it doesn't work yeah it throws all the others wrong as well 
So that's worth bearing in mind. Look out for that video coming soon. Well, what else, Tony? Well, what else is you're going to hear it, but you're not going to hear it in this video. You're going to hear it in the next video. And I'm going to do some recording of through the mic. You can imagine how that'll sound. Oh, you can't. <laughs> Trust me. Good as you get. And then we're going to do some through the routine and the various presets that I've got set up to do that. And we're going to compare the two. Now, we're not going to go flip, 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 comparing the two. It's just a question of saying, well, I like this sound or I like that sound. And because it's subjective, I mean, some people will love the helix to the desk and other people will love the amp. You might like both. Uh, they might sound very similar. It just depends what I get set up at the time. But that's coming. Uh, and it's just a question of... Uh, yeah, getting the time behind it. I've been busy and I've got wrist and arm trouble and ah, you name it. Uh, but I'm still around. <laughs> so that's coming uh, presently. Oh, I'll tell you what else I've got coming. Yeah, ah, almost forgot. <laughs> it's just taking that long to get it. King of Tone. Yeah, yeah. Analog Man. Yeah, great names. All great names we've all heard of them. Has anybody bought one? Has anybody actually got one? Do you know something? Three years ago, I'm not making this up, three years ago, uh, there will be a video uh, on that product and uh, what I went through to get it. And uh, my friend uh, on the internet, he knows who he is, uh, pointed me towards one of them. And uh, yeah, it's about to arrive. I know it's going to arrive because I just paid the tax to get it in the country. But it actually took me three years before they got back to me. And uh, I ordered a white one. I want it to be different. Yeah, you know, everybody's got the sort of, I don't know, purple one. But I don't see many white ones around. And I had a few other things changed as well. So that should be worth watching when it comes up anytime soon. Uh, it will arrive Monday. It will take me at least a week of messing around. Uh, but that's coming. Uh, what else? Well, I've been looking for new products out there. And I've seen the little Roland thing, the GT1000 Mini... Mim Minimum, or whatever they call it, aren't it? Basic or core, or whatever it is. I'm not really spending 700 quid on that. No, it's not happening. And then there's, they've got another one about this big, uh, which I did think was quite good actually. That, that's a tiny little one, but it can do a load of different stuff. I might just go and get one of them. And as regarding other stuff, well, I don't see that much new coming out, do you? Uh, yeah, there's a few things, a few bits and pieces here and there, but. Is there anything really worth going out and buying to review? Well, I'm still looking. <laughs> anyway, this is this is the end of this one. Uh, don't forget to go to www.tonymackenzie.com if you get a chance. And uh, yeah, watch out for the playing, which will probably be the next video or the one after. It's one or the other. And uh, yeah, I'm sure all the fractal boys will be across to have a listen at how they insist it will be sounding terrible. <laughs> Which it doesn't sound terrible. Yeah. So until next time, get out of here. Boom! <laughs>